إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorifying He azza wa jal and sending salam upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we advise ourselves with that which Allah has advised us in the Quran in multiple places which is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to uphold the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us and has entrusted us with. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also as advises us in the Quran is to have that taqwa and have that consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ that you do not find yourself that death comes to you except that you are a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As to what follows today, Allah Azza wa Jal has allowed us to see many special times of the year. Among them, Allah Azza wa Jal, He allowed us to witness the month of Ramadan and in it, Laylatul Qadr. And in it, and after it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to witness an entire season of Hajj, an entire season wherein there were sacred months, Dhul Qa'da and Dhul Hijjah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to see the greatest day of the year, which was the day of sacrifice. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He allowed us to see and to witness. And for some of us, He allowed us to be physically there in Yawmul Arafah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He blessed us to see Shahrullah. Allah Azza wa Jal, He blessed us to see a month which we are currently in. The only month which is known as the month of Allah. This month of Muharram, is known as the month of Allah, Shahrullah al-Muharram. This month is ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is his month subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this month of Muharram, there is a day which has great significance to the believer and it has great significance to people of the book. And this is the day of Ashura, or the 10th day of Muharram, in which the Prophet wasallam has narrated, and it has been narrated from the Prophet wasallam several ahadith talking about this day. And there have been many reports talking about things that have occurred on this day. And the Prophet wasallam he mentioned that the Jews were fasting in Medina 
and they informed him that they are fasting out of veneration and out of happiness of the day that Musa and Bani Israel were saved from Fir'aun. And there are some other reports of things that have happened on this day, some of which are authentic and some which are not authentic. We also know that on this day, there were significant events that occurred in the life of the grandson of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is important for the Muslim to know their history. It is important for the Muslim to study that which has happened and to be aware and to be informed believers when it comes to all of these incidents and everything that has taken place in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and thereafter. Today, we want to extract some lessons. Today, we don't want to give a story, we don't want to give history, because many times we have heard all of these things already. And many times, people will continuously talk about different stories and different uh, incidents that occurred in this time period. We want to take some things that are practical. Among the things that have been narrated about the day of Ashura, and about the events of this day, we see an underlying theme. If we take the, the story of Musa alayhi salam and the Bani Israel, we will see that after long periods of persecution, after long periods of preaching, after long periods of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, enduring hardship and difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa and gave Bani Israel a way out of the persecution and the torment of Fir'aun. He took them out of that zulm. He took them out of that injustice and he gave them something which was better. He gave them a miraculous exit from that situation. And so the points of benefit that we want to take is that after a period of difficulty, after a period of struggle, after a period of tests and trials, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always has something better for the believer. There is always something better for the believer, whether you see it in this life or whether it is something for you in the hereafter and sometimes you get both of them. Either Allah will reward you in this life and in the next, or Allah will withhold for the believer their reward until the next life. So don't think that because you're being tested and Allah subhanahu he says in the Quran that after difficulty comes ease and you're not seeing any ease, that Allah subhanahu has forsaken you. Rather, it might be that your reward is coming soon or Allah is keeping your reward and a better reward for the hereafter. Because there is no reward that can be given in this life that will compare to that which Allah has in store in the hereafter. And so some of the benefits that we want to take is when it comes to hardship, when it comes to difficulty, when it comes to depression, when it comes to anxiety, when it comes to all of these struggles that we have in the world, what does our religion teach us about them? The first and foremost point that we want to mention is that you and I were worshipped to create were, were created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your purpose and my purpose of creation. Allah subhanahu he created us that we might worship him. So this is part of what makes us human beings. This is a part of what makes us servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the underlying root of why we were even put on this earth to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu he says in the Quran, Did you think, did we think, did mankind think that we would say we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we would not be tested. Did we really think that I say I believe in Allah and that's all that's needed? That Allah is not going to test me further? This is a question that Allah poses in the Quran. Did you really think that that was going to be it? This shows us right away 
that it is one thing to say that I believe, but it is another thing to be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to overcome those tests. The second lesson that we want to take is that Allah, t Allah tests us and Allah gives us trials so that you may be purified, so that your sins can be washed away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us small tests, small difficulties in this world that help to wipe away sins that would be punishable in the akhirah. Where would you rather your punishment? Where would you rather your expiation? Here or with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in a hadith, one that is well known, that no calamity befalls a believer except that it is a means of expiation. It is a means of their sins being wiped away even if it is something as small as being pricked by a thorn. Think about the little small things that happen to you on a daily basis. And if you have the mindset that whatever sickness, whatever you know, financial difficulty, whatever anxiety, whatever sadness, whatever physical ailments I might have is a means of Allah cleansing me of my sins, then this is something that will help us to cope. This is something that will help us to be patient. This is something that will help us to get closer to Allah through this test and through this difficulty. The next lesson that we want to take from these type of Miss, uh, these type of tests and these type of difficulties. Know that a difficulty that you may get, something that you perceive as negative, may be a replacement, may be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replacing something that is even worse. Allah azza wa jal, he says in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ that you may dislike something, you may hate something, you may feel like, why is Allah giving this to me? But in reality, it is good for you. And Allah, He also says the opposite. And that, and that you may like something, you may think that something is good, something is pleasurable, you may want money, you may want that new position, you may want more authority, but in reality, it's not good for you. You think it's good, it looks good, but in reality, Allah subhanahu he says that sometimes what looks good and what you think is good is not actually good for you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace something negative by giving you something else that is also negative. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might give you a trial, might give you a test, but in reality, it is in replacement and it is in lieu of something that is even greater. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved you from something that is even bigger. The next point that we want to make mention of, when you are tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah gives you something of difficulty, this is a means of strengthening your iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is reported to have said in a hadith that the people who face the most difficult tests by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the prophets. And then those who are righteous, and then those who follow them in righteousness. So in decreasing levels of righteousness, those are the people who are tested the most. Those are the people who are tested in the most severe manner. And at the top of the list are those who are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the human beings, the prophets alayhim salatu was salam. They are the ones who are tested in the highest degree by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who will say it? that the prophets are not from the closest to Allah. They are not from the best of human creation. When we have prophets like our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is known as Sayyidi Waladi Adam, the leader of all of the children of Adam. And we know of the high level of our prophets in Islam. And these are the ones who are tested at, to the highest and most intense degree. So Allah subhanahu he tests those whom he loves and he tests those whom he wants to strengthen their iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said 
in the Quran in an ayah that which that which we have heard many times and which is very famous he said subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will definitely test you we're definitely going to test you with evil and with good we're going to test you with both evil and with good and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your return so think about your life Think about when something negative befalls you. Very clearly, we look to that and we say that this is definitely a hardship, this is definitely a trial. And sometimes that's very easy to identify. It's very easy to say that we need to be patient. It's very easy to say that this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what's difficult to identify, what's difficult to persevere through is when you are tested with something that's good. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you with wealth when he tests you with power, when he tests you with authority, when he tests you with things that people want and people love, when he tests you with family, when he tests you with having many children, when he tests you with having a, a righteous and a good spouse, all of these things can be and are tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many times these are the things that are very difficult to identify and very difficult to you know, persevere with. These are the things that are difficult for us as human beings. So what are some ways that we can pass the tests? What are some ways that we can make it through the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us? Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he mentions that when we're tested, there are two options. The first of them is to be patient. And this is obviously the best choice for us as believers and the choice that we should be taking. And then the second option is the complete opposite, to not be patient, to, in the face of difficulty, cry out, blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, waver in your iman and waver in your faith. So what are some ways that you can pass these tests? What are some ways that you can remain intact when you are tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first of them is to attach yourself to the dhikr of Allah. And the best of dhikr is that of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu he says that the remembrance of Allah is what brings rest and comfort to the hearts. And the best of remembrance of Allah, the best of dhikr is that of the Qur'an, is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So attach yourself to the Qur'an. The second, the believer has a weapon and the believer has a means of reaching out directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to go to anyone else. You don't need to ask someone to make this on your behalf. You don't need to do anything except that you yourself raise your hands. You yourself call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He keeps you strong, that He keeps you safe, that He aids you in whatever you're, ha you're going through. Like the prophets did. And we see that throughout the Quran. For example, the Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, he, re, he calls out to Allah, Inni masani al-dur wa anta arhamur rahimeen. And then the Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam, after he was tested, Inna ma ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. Every single time they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the believer should always be in the dua, in reaching out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third point, to be grateful for what, you're, for what you have. To show thanks and gratitude for what you have. Allah subhanahu, he says in the Quran, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ That very few from the believers, very few from the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are thankful and grateful. Be from those few people who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at what you have, and look at what so many below you have. Look at what you have and look at what so many who are on the streets, so many who are orphans, so, so many who face food insecurity, so many who are in countries with political turmoil, so many who are being persecuted because of their faith. Look at where you are 
and look at what, where they are. Look at the situation that they are in and look at the situation that you are in. Look at the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you and then assess whether you are really in such difficulty. Look at the situation that you are in versus those who are below you, those who have less than you. And then allow yourself to realize that this is something small as compared to what others are going through. This is something difficult, yes, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me in so many other things and so many other people are in so much more difficulty. And so this will be a means of you being able to persevere and for you to be able to patiently endure. The fifth point that we want to mention and we'll end with one point after this. The fifth point that we want to mention, understand that nothing in this world is forever. Nothing in this world is forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He promises. He promises in the Quran in a verse which we are all familiar with. In a verse which we know well. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that He's not going to task any soul. He's not going to task any individual with more than they can bear. Something, a very famous ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah in the end of the surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says this. He's not going to give us anything that we cannot bear. He's not going to task us with more than we can deal with. And so understand that nothing in this life lasts forever. Nothing in this life lasts forever. And so it is upon us to be patient knowing that the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near. Knowing that the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. Whether we get it in this life or we get it in the life to come. Brothers, if you can please move forward as much as you can. Make space for those who are coming late inshallah. Fill up the gaps. Know that whatever is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to you. Know that the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to you. And the point that we want to end with. Some people have trials. Some people have tribulations that are long term. Maybe financial difficulty that lasts for years. Maybe a physical ailment that lasts for a long period of time. Maybe there's whatever the case may be, whatever the difficulty might be. And it seems as though there's no way out. When you look at your issue, when you look at your situation, you can definitely say it looks like this is not going to be solved tomorrow. There's very little hope in your mind that anything will be solved in a short period of time. And so you look at this as something that is going to be long term, that you're going to be tested with this difficulty for a long period of time. And for many people, this can be extremely, extremely dejecting. This can be something that lowers your morale. This can be something that causes you to waver in your iman. This can be something that causes you to give up hope. And in these cases, I advise myself and I advise you to take every single day as it is. Take it one day at a time. Don't look at this problem as something that lasts for years or something that's going to last for months. But look at it one day at a time. You wake, you wake up, you deal with what you have to deal with. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You attach yourself to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you end that day with a win. You do all of those things one day and you end that day. You go to sleep with a win. You've won that day. And then you wake up and you do it again tomorrow. Tomorrow is not the, a continuation of the day before. Rather, tomorrow is a day in it of itself. Tomorrow is its own opportunity. And so if you treat every single day like that, you deal with your problems one day at a time. You deal with the tests one day at a time. And every single day, you strive as much as you can to worship Allah, 
to attach yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to attach yourself to the dhikr of Allah, to have reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And little by little, one win comes to two wins, comes to three wins. And before you know it, you've had a pile and a stockpile of days in which you have done good. In days which you've come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In days which you have won. And tackling difficulties in this manner is something that can be beneficial. Instead of looking at it as a mountain where you lose hope and you become scared and you, become to, you begin to waver in your iman. Look at that mountain and start to chip away little by little. The same way that the artist will sculpt out of a, out of a slab of rock until it becomes the statue that they were trying to create, until it becomes that image that they were trying to recreate. Little by little is what we need when it comes to this life and when it comes to the trials and the tribulations that we face. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ease our affairs. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ease in everything that we do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us good in this life. We ask Allah azza wa jal to give us good in the life to come. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all from the people of Jannah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'ri al-muslimin fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاة وقال أيضا إن الله مع الصابرين The underlying theme of all of the means of going through trials and difficulties passing through trials and difficulties the underlying theme is to be patient. The underlying theme is to attach yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to seek aid and assistance through prayer and patience. Allah subhanahu He says, seek your aid through prayer and patience. The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being patient in the face of calamity. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says something that is reassuring to every single one of us. Allah is with those who are patient. Inna Allah sabirin The one who exemplifies patience. The one who is patient at the first sign of distress and calamity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the patient. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us patience to go through all of the trials and tribulations of this life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the trials and tribulations of the akhirah easy for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant ease and to grant patience to our brothers and sisters throughout the world who are facing difficulty, who are facing trial, who are facing war, who are facing famine, who are facing any level of difficulty. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid them with His aid and to give them patience to endure. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make their reward and our reward the reward of Jannah and the reward of His mercy and the reward of the highest levels of paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid our brothers and sisters in Sudan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid our brothers and sisters in China. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid all of the Muslims undergoing difficulty wherever they may be. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal our sick, those whom we know and those whom we don't know. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on our dead, those whom we know and those whom we don't know. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our reckoning with him easy. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. 
عباد الله رحمنا ورحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم